What's up guys? So two cards got released that I was really excited about in the light spoilers. It's Interdimensional Escape and the awesome Croco Shark. Uh, with Interdimensional Escape, I think this card's actually going to be really relevant to the meta, opposed to Croco Shark just being like kind of a really fun card. Um, the Interdimensional Escape card is a two light one colorless, and it says each player chooses a resonator they control, then each player banishes all other resonators they control. Uh, it's an instant, which is right where it needed to be. If this was a chant, it would kind of be too slow, especially because light doesn't always really have anything to push for damage. But this being a chant is just so, so, so good. I love, I mean, an instant. It, it makes it so great to be able to like have your opponent overextend and just punish them during the end phase or when they try to enter battle. And I think that's just really, really crazy. The best part I think about this card is it's just so ridiculously versatile when it comes to like what you can do during battle if your opponent is like let's say less than 2000 life and you're swinging with like let's say a celestial wing seraph or something and they have like just a guyber and they're like oh you know if i just take that thousand i can like use all my little stuff in my guyber to like kill them next turn or whatever and it's like you could do really cool things where it's like you can chase this card and then they are forced to like like, or let's say if they do block with the Gwyber and then you chase this card, they're forced to keep the Gwyber as the blocker. Or let's say they have something weaker, like they have, you're attacking for a thousand with Celestial Wing Seraph and they're gonna lose. And they have, they're forced to block and they have like a Gwyber and then like some other kind of flyer. Let's say Guardian Angel, which was one of the other spoilers I did, which is a 4-8. And they're like, oh, you know, like I'll just block with my Guardian Angel and then, you know, try to push for some damage with Gwyber or whatever. If you chase this card, they're forced to keep the guardian angel as the blocker or else they'll lose the blocker and they'll lose the game so you essentially choose to keep your celestial wing seraph they would choose to keep guardian angel your battle would go through and kill it and you would have wiped their entire board for three which is absolutely ridiculous i mean there's so many ways you could just use this card to make it so that uh your opponent is kind of punished for choosing to enter the battle phase the incorrect way if they declare an attack with like a weaker creature first and um they have like a, a stronger creature that's gonna attack second you can use this card and then it's like well do you want to lose your strong card or do you want to like pretty much banish the attacker and not get that attack through there's just so many different ways you can use this card and i think it's really 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 insane like it's just so good and i'm so happy it's a rare because like every now and then when you look at the art for a card like this i could see them making cards like this uncommon because a lot of the uncommons are like almost good enough to be full art but then like they're not and i'm glad this card's gonna look absolutely amazing as a full art i don't have a problem with the text a lot of people haven't come uh, i mean about the font a, a lot of people have been complaining about the font i think like in person when you have like a full art card and like if those letters are like hollow or whatever i think it's gonna look really nice actually and um yeah like i and, and the flavor text on this card is really interesting too it says uh only kaguya alice and charlotte managed to escape uh, for anyone who doesn't know who Charlotte is, it's the girl in the back, obviously, because we recognize Kaguya and Alice. Uh, Charlotte is Faria's little sister. If you guys have watched my lore videos, I've kind of gotten into her a lot more often. Also, if there's any, like, construction noise in the background, I do apologize. I don't know what's going on out there. It's like a war zone, but, um, there's no demons this time, just war zone. That we'll keep it not supernatural this time, but, uh, yeah, so Charlotte is Faria's little sister who like grew up really sick she's always had like illnesses and stuff inside of her and so she's always been very like frail and like always like kind of bedridden because she's so like dying all the time and so Faria of course asked Alice to watch over Charlotte as she was about to die to like um Dark Alice when like Shoringer ate her and so Alice had promised um Faria that she would take care of Charlotte because Lars is uh, Faria's brother, and he's like he like went to Serdo to like fight against Melgis at one point, or try to get their side or something. He was like off going to Serdo, but which explains why he's fired because he might have like learned some stuff there. I don't know, but um, so Charlotte is Faria's sister. She finally like awoke from her like sickness or whatever. I don't know if there's like an interesting power inside of her that we don't know. Maybe like her body couldn't handle how much power she had and therefore it was kind of translated to like illness because her body couldn't keep up but maybe now she's like the prodigy and she's like insane and like super powerful and nobody knows it 
So Alice is rescuing Charlotte and Coggy is rescuing Alice and they're going back to the Grim Cluster which as we know is the next cluster again for um, after rotation. So in September it's considered the next block is called the Lapis Cluster but it's back to Grim's world and so we'll see a lot of the same like cards from Grim's world and um, I remember Jordan saying in one of the streams that like somebody asked him what Zero's outfit was going to be whether she was going to be like white Zero or like the dark zero and he said that like Grimm has amassed like a bunch of light warriors and like zero is one of them so it's really interesting we're gonna see a lot of good light cards I think because of I feel like that's kind of like a little spoiler for light uh we finally are getting really relevant cards Tsukiyomi is really good Angel of Wisdom is really good Guardian Angel is very good Celestial Wings there is very good and now we have kind of like a a field control card too and I can just imagine like light is kind of becoming very control heavy which i like stuff like Sukiyomi and interdimensional escape i can only imagine like wiping the board down to just a Sukiyomi and a interdimensional escape not to mention like you cannot have any cards on your field and still play this card like you can literally have zero cards and they have seven and then you use this and then they go down to one like <laughs> that's a one like you know you kill six things for one card which is really insane and because it doesn't like destroy or anything it's really nice to know that you avoid any specific effects uh, and it doesn't target, which means, let's say if your opponent has like four Guinevere's, well I guess four Guinevere's is a bad option because they can just chase all of them, but if they have like one Guinevere and five other cards, uh, they can't like sack another card to avoid this card or something. It's like they would sack that card and it would now have to be one of the other cards they can't choose to keep, which of course is what they wouldn't keep, but just in general, like when it doesn't target, uh, your effect applies last depending on what they do, so it's like... If they pick that one Gwyber, they could still chase the Gwyber on another card, but they would no matter what have to be stuck with that one Gwyber. It doesn't target, so it just wipes everything else, which is really, really nice. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for like what Light is getting. If we really, if we don't get Dual Stones back, I think it's going to be even more interesting because uh, I've been playing a little bit of Alice Cluster and Blazer seems very good because of how many colors he can run. Gilapa seems really good because he stops Regalias, which means anyone relying on Rulers of Moria is kind of having a harder time trying to catch up to him. Uh, not to mention that with um, a lot of the new black cards we're seeing, I think Gilapis is actually going to be really, really good, uh, even if you run him just mono black. But uh, it, it's really nice to see that we're going to have a lot of different ways to play light. And if we don't get the dual stones back, it'll be kind of interesting to play an all white deck. You you kind of would be controlling them with like, let's say, let's say Kogu is your ruler. You have uh, Moon Breeze Memorias, so you have like um, some Moon, some Light, and then obviously the special green, but you probably wouldn't focus on it too much. And then you have like Tsukiyomi controlling the Activates, Guardian Angel controlling the Rulers. If they overextend, you use this Instrumental Escape to like wipe their board and keep them down um, to like a regular amount. And swinging with 5 or 4 with Guardian Angel and Tsukiyomi is actually a lot of damage really quick, especially because uh guardian angel is a flyer i think like light is going to be in a really good place next format like cards like Tsukiyomi are just really strong in general and then croco shark so croco shark is like probably now one of my most favorite cards in this entire game i could definitely see why jordan was completely obsessed with this card it's one of those cards that are super fun uh as everyone knows i work at core tcg and like every now and then um even though i strictly handle just force of will there I of course help out with like Yu-Gi-Oh and Vanguard and all the other card games like if they need help with it and I was opening uh, one of the Vanguard sets and there was like there's like a clan in that game called Neo Nectar and it says like they're like plants that swarm the field with extra copies of themselves so some of them say that like you can run more than four copies in your deck and there was a card that said you can have up to 16 copies of this card in your deck and I was like what is this? It's like the worst card I've ever seen. Like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they would ever introduce this mechanic. And then somebody told me that Magic actually has that too. Like, they have like a rat or something that can like flood the board and you can have as many as you want. And and they're like $2 each. So it's like, if you want it, you have to drop a lot of money on it. But, um, so Croco Shark's really cool. It's You may have any number of copies of, of this card in your main deck, which is pretty fun. And then it's a stealth card. So... Um, you can set it of course and then when you summon a monster you can flip him in and what he does is when he's flipped in from your standby zone uh, you can put another croco shark from your hand into the field and then each croco shark gains plus two plus two well this card gains plus two plus two for each croco shark you control but that way if you have you know 
two of them, that's they would be six six, which is pretty big, really fast. So I think it's really funny. Like it's kind of a shame that Kagi is being rotated out because somebody pointed out that you know Pumpkin Witch this and Kagi would be insane, which it really, really would. Uh, but we don't really have to worry about that for more than like just anything. I guess like Wander League might have to worry about it for a little bit. But I think there's gonna be a lot more you can probably do that you have to worry about. Uh, other than just Croco Shark beatdown. Uh, if your opponent does have mana open too, they can just use Interdimensional Escape to wipe your whole board. And then whichever uh, Croco Shark they keep on the field is now only going to be a 4 4. So, oh no, wait, it says for each other Croco Shark you control. Oh, so they don't even get that big. It would just stay a 2 2, so it's not even that bad. But it's still pretty cool. So, scratch what I said, they would all be 4 4s uh, if you only had 2, and then 6 6 if you had 3. So, they just get supposed to for each other one. So. Um, I think it's it's still a really fun card. I think it's really cool. Uh, I made a post on the Facebook group about this too, but uh, I like having four of everything in the game just because that makes it so that I can make any deck profile for you guys or uh, just play whatever I want personally at locals. And I'm, uh, as most people have noticed, like a rarity horse, so I have to have everything in max rarity, uh, except for the Ubers, which are kind of really expensive, but I plan on getting them like eventually. And um, so I was like, I have everything I need, and then I have to buy Croco Shark, and I was like, I have to buy 40 foil Croco Sharks, <laughs> like, this is going to be kind of funny, I have to sit there and buy 40 foil Croco Sharks, so I might just buy 36, because I feel like you'll always need the 4 other summon spells in the deck, so you would never want more than 36, like, per se, especially because there's that Hair of Inaba card that actually doesn't seem really bad, and, um, so I'm thinking, like, okay, maybe what I'll do is I'll buy 36 and then it'll perfectly fit like three pages in a binder because it's like 12 a page that's so 12 24 36 so I might just do that but maybe I'll show off my collection of Croco Sharks one day I don't know if, if I actually do end up getting that much but yeah I, I think this card's really really cool uh its design is really interesting it opens up a lot of interesting designs for the future it actually seems quite playable too it doesn't seem like the worst card ever so um it's quite possible that like maybe Rezar decks will be able to play this somehow and like swarm the field or whatnot. So it seems like a pretty interesting card. Um, I like I feel like it's also really cool because it's gotten so popular that like people are starting to do like memes and stuff with it, which I think is cool for the community. I mean like it's really interesting to you know have that kind of like fun. A lot of people sometimes get either like too competitive or they complain too much about one thing or another. So I like cards like this. Like if somebody made a Croco Shark playmat, I'll, I'll buy it. Like I'll like spend like 40 bucks at most. If you wanna sell me a Croco Shark, it has to be like really well made though. Like it has to be like, like a full playmat of Croco Shark. It can't be like blurry or anything. But if somebody makes a Croco Shark uh, playmat and like previews it to me so I can like, like it first. I don't wanna like, you know, eBay lock myself into buying anything right now. But uh, if you show me a Croco Shark mat, and it looks really nice, I will buy it, I'll feature it on the channel, and then I'll give you a shout out for whoever made me the Croco Shark playmat. So, um, it's like one of those things where it's just cool to have. Like, I want to be able to spread the word of the amazing Croco Shark. So, let me know what you guys think of any of the other spoilers. There was a bunch of bunny stuff that came out, but it didn't seem really, like, too good. Uh, Kaguya was like, if this card enters the field, you can summon up to, like, four bunnies. But it costs, like, a total of, like, five. And it's like, because you awaken for two and she costs three. And it's like, if I'm paying five, I might as well drop Celestial Wing Seraph. And if I'm going to play any more than that, you might as well drop like Hung Long and summon like four more cards. So, I mean, maybe we'll get like future bunnies that'll be really good. But from the ones they've showed so far, they're not that, like, um, they're not too good just yet. Uh, there was a standby called like Rabbit Trap. It was a like a bunny horde eating a human like alive. Like you could see... His rotting flesh and then like if you look really carefully it'll be I don't think I'm gonna be able to put it in the video but if you guys are following and you look in the article if you pay attention to like the bunny that looks like it's in the human's hand but like in a distance that bunny has such a troll look on its face it's just like human must eat like it looks like that one is the secret terrifying one all the other ones are like clearly attacking him but that one has the worst intentions. It like it looks pure evil inside. Like it looks like it has no soul. So a lot of the cards are great art. Like all the bunnies are ridiculously cute. I want to have like just infinite playsets of all of these cards because they look really cool. And they just look, you know, like the art on them is really really cute. Especially the giant bunny on Kaguya. Uh, that one I like a lot too actually. So I mean, let me know what you guys think about all the spoilers. It doesn't have to just be on Croco Shark and Interdimensional Escape. 
Um, if you guys do have any like specific suggestions for any other videos that are going to come up, I've been actually at meaning to ask for that. Uh, I want to do stuff outside of spoilers for this kind of the, the gap between now and the next set. It's just I haven't had the time to dig back into the story and I don't really want to revamp any deck profiles right now until after Vegas at least where we'll only have Alice Cluster. I'll probably start doing deck profiles then too. But um, if you guys have any other specific suggestions, maybe if you like are having trouble understanding rotation, I do have I do have videos on what's getting rotated out, and I still have to finish a couple sets. But if you particularly like want a specific video on understanding something better, or I was thinking about doing a Q and A. So if anyone's interested in a Q and A, I might be doing that. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Definitely leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I'll definitely catch you guys next time.